Power and unity, guys. Power and unity. Everybody say unity. unity. Listen, <clears throat> it's funny, you know, with a music group, you can hear there are times we're in unity and there's times we're in disunity. <laughs> maybe we're, maybe I'm beating the wrong drum or something or, you know, God forbid a guitarist hits the wrong chord and it sounds out of place. Unity is when everything's coming together and working as it should. Amen? And I want to talk to you out of our Torah portion tonight about the power in unity. Unity can accomplish great things. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you, Father, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, I pray, Lord, as I submit myself to you, body, soul, and spirit, that you speak through me to these, your people, Father. Give everyone within the sound of my voice, either by YouTube tonight or those who are here tonight, Father, a word in season, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, Lord, something they can take and apply to their life, some encouragement in Yeshua's name. And everyone said, Amen. amen. Unity can accomplish great things. Someone say amen. amen. Let's take a look at this tonight. <clears throat> so I'm out at our Torah portion, Exodus chapter 36, in verse 2. And I'm peeking over her shoulder just to see how it's looking. Then Moses called Basilel and Aholib and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord has put wisdom. How many of you know Miss Karen right here is a gifted artisan? Someone say amen. That's a gift. I can't draw like that. I can't paint like that. Now, we all have different gifts, amen? Chalk's gift, y'all see that over there on the table, amen? That's one of his gifts. We all have different gifts. So here what happened is these gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. It is the Father's Wisdom. I put widom. Sorry. It is the Father's wisdom that gives the gifts to an artisan. Amen. Your gifts, don't take credit for them. Someone told me once, they said, boy, they're like, Rabbi, you're so intelligent. My intelligence didn't come to me by myself. That was a gift from God. I didn't make myself intelligent. Are you following me? Now, there are people who are intelligent that, like I said, that's just a gift. Now, I'm not talking about how much you study or don't study. That's a different subject. That's discipline. But intelligence, the ability to figure things out, that's a gift from God, okay? Whatever gifting you have in your life, and you all have a gift. Some people's gift is serving others. Serving others. I was sharing uh, a couple weeks ago, there's a man, uh, one of the elders here, and when I first came here five years ago, he was confused. He told me, he said, Pastor, I don't know what my gift I don't think I have a gift. I mean, if you know, a Father's given everybody a gift. Turns out his gift is a gift of service. He loves to serve. And he's great at it, amen? And I was like, wow, it's called the gift of hospitality. A great gift, amen? So listen, you may not have yet fully discovered your gifts, but whatever gifts you have, they were placed there by the Father's wisdom. It is up to them and up to you to use your gifts for his kingdom. Someone say amen. You've got to use the gifts he's given to you for his kingdom, for his purposes. Amen? Listen, how many of you heard about that famous actor, um, Luke Perry? Is that his name? Luke Perry? Did I say that right? Played in 90150, whatever the address was. 90250. Luke Perry, wasn't it Luke Perry? He had a stroke, right? He's in an induced coma, 51 years of age. And when I heard that, and I pray for him in the name of Yeshua for a speedy recovery, but the first thing I thought is I hope he's a believer because all the giftings and acting in the world, if they're not being applied towards his kingdom, then they're being used to serve yourself. And all that money in the world that you make as an actor or actress, not going to help you when you're struck 
suddenly by some disease or illness or something else. Then all of a sudden it goes back to the only thing that matters in your life is what you did in the kingdom of God for the good Lord. Amen? Amen? Matter of fact, that's what everything always boils down to. And if we think about that, maybe we'll begin to use more of our gifts for him. The Spirit, look at what it says here. It says, everyone whose heart was stirred. The Spirit stirs your heart for a reason. You know what I think of when I think of stir? I think of a pot of chili I'm cooking. I think you put in a big spoon, you just kind of stir it. I think of the Holy Spirit putting a spiritual spoon in my heart and just stirring me up, stirring me up, because He wants to use the gifting He's placed inside of you and placed inside of me for His purpose. So he stirs your heart. All of a sudden, you're a little dissatisfied, a little discontent, because it's like, ooh, what's happening? Well, maybe I'm thinking a little bit too much about myself and not enough about others, not enough about his kingdom. Amen? And all of a sudden, you find your heart starts to get stirred. I love that. Thank God for the stirring of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We don't need stir police. Amen? The Holy Spirit does a great job of stirring our hearts, of stirring our hearts. Amen? So the Spirit stirs your heart, but He does it for a reason. He does it for a reason, amen? The reason is for you, everybody say me, me. to do, look, what, what are the last three words? I know they're naughty words nowadays, but Exodus 36, 2, and do the work. Everybody say, do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Yes. Did you know work is not a part of the curse of the law? I'm telling you, it's not. Some people think it is. It's not. God ordained Adam and Eve to work the garden. But after they sinned against God, now he said that when you work, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow. The ground's not going to produce like it would have if you had obeyed. All right? So all the hardship in working, that's part of the curse. But work itself is a God-ordained thing. Amen? You know, we have these hymns about entering into his eternal rest. I hate to tell you all this, but I think there's work to be done even during the thousand-year reign of Messiah. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I think there's rest coming in the future. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know it's going to be good if he's there. Amen? Now, verse 3. And they received from Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. Now they're building the tabernacle, this tented structure in the wilderness, to serve as their temple, to serve as their place of worship, to serve as the place where Holy Spirit is. Are you following me? So that's why all these artisans and gifted people, they're coming together for a purpose. And it says here, uh, so they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. You know what that means? They left the work they were doing to do God's work, to do the Father's work. Amen? They'd been working on their own stuff. They left their own stuff. We're going to take a little season, and we're going to build the tabernacle. Amen? And they spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. Oh, that gives me chills. I love that. Amen. Amen. I love that. Listen to me, guys. If you find Father's plan for your life and in your life, you find His divine provision. Are you following me? What do I mean by that? Let's say Father calls you to one day open an orphanage. He's not going to call you to open an orphanage without first providing or during that time, providing the funding, the finances, and everything you need to see that come to pass. Are you following? Now, if you're calling yourself to do something, and how many of you know a lot of Christians, a lot of people, we can do something that he's not in because he hadn't really told us to do that. I've been there. I've done it. We mean well, but we're way ahead of the game, and we wonder where is provision. Well, maybe I'm not in his plan. Maybe I'm not in his plan. You find his plan, you find his provision. Guaranteed every time. Amen? These were all of one heart and one purpose. Everybody say one heart. One heart. Everybody say one purpose. one purpose. Wow, when God's people get together of one heart and one purpose, there is nothing that can't be done. 
100,000 believers gathered last week in Orlando. Believers from all across the nation to fast, to pray, to hear the prophetic voice of the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit is saying. And I already know what He's saying because He said it. We've been doing it and we've been seeing the Holy Spirit move praying and fasting. Praying and fasting. Amen? And now all of a sudden other people, the Spirit's moving and guess what He's saying? Pray and fast, pray and fast, pray and fast, pray and fast. Pray and fast and then you'll do. Pray and fast and then you'll do. Pray and fast and then you'll go. Pray and fast and then you'll speak. Pray and fast and then you'll be healed. Pray and fast and demons will be cast out. Pray and fast and the supernatural miracles of our Heavenly Father will begin to follow the believers again. <clears throat> but you have to get to that place where you're willing just enough to put down the flesh and say, you know what? I will not die if I don't eat this meal. I know this is America, but trust me, you won't die. Are you following me? Did you know at these restaurants, they serve enough food for like almost a whole neighborhood? I'm like, man, cut the price, cut the portion. I'll be happier. Because my problem is once I start eating, it tastes so good, you want to eat it all. Even though you're stuffed to your gills halfway through it. Right? And then you're like, well, if I bring it home, it'll be cold and won't taste as good later. So let me finish and commit gluttony now. See, Toby, we're on one accord, brother. Exodus 36, 6. So Moses gave a commandment. <laughs> And they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing. Like, we got enough. We're done. We've got enough. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. For the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. Listen, unity can accomplish great things. Everybody say great things. Great. Unified around a project given by the Lord. Amen. Unified around a project. Our staff here with our congregation, you know, we have different projects that we take home. One of these projects, and one of the reasons we're doing this, is to send children to summer camp so that their lives during that week can be transformed by the Holy Spirit. To me, touching the next generation by the Spirit of God, they're going to have fun, but it's not about fun. It's about Holy Spirit changing their lives. To me, that's one of the most important things we can do. Amen? Unified around a project given by the Lord. Unity required giving of oneself, giving of your craft, giving of your treasure, giving of your time. Some people have the gift of giving. Did you know that? They can't paint, but man, they love to give. They love to give. And they give for the kingdom of God. It was so strange today. It's just a strange day. As we're making plans, Josh and I, we're uh, uh, looking at these, these uh, uh, skateboards we're going to send to the children and figuring all that out and stuff and writing them and, and, and making that commitment to do that. All of a sudden, people start coming by. Somebody came by. I'm like, hey, what can I do for you, brother? And he comes here, new, new here. I just came to pick up some tithe envelopes. Like, weird. Who comes by during the middle of the week to pick up tithe envelopes? Came by to pick up tithe envelopes. Somebody else, 10 minutes later, hey, I just came by, I want to drop off some checks. Hadn't been here in a while, I want to give some checks, give some money. 10 minutes later, some comes in the mail, more money comes in the mail. And we're like, Wow, am I lying, Josh? Am I exaggerating or am I telling God's honest truth? Amen? And I'm telling you, you can't outgive the Lord. Amen? Amen? And some people have the gift of giving, and man, you're giving. And listen, nobody here is getting rich off this deal except in eternity. Amen? Amen? Everything we have that comes in is going out for some purpose, for some godly reason. Amen? <clears throat> Unity can be for evil or it can be for good. An example of this is the building of the Tower of Babel. That was an example of unity towards evil and towards the evil agenda. Matter of fact, the Heavenly Father saw what had been done, and he said, they are of one people of one language. 
nothing is impossible to them. And right now, Satan is working overtime to reverse what was done at the Tower of Babel. What happened at the Tower of Babel? The languages were confused. Now they have this thing, you speak into it, and whatever language you want, out it comes. And all of a sudden, all of the languages, all of the nations, there is a group of people in every nation that are wanting to turn this whole thing into one unified world government. That's their goal. They think it's safer that way. Not, But they're wanting to reverse what the Spirit did. So there is a unity even amongst evil people. Another example is abortion, which is the murder of unborn children. That's a rallying cry for evil, like-minded individuals. Also as an example. I'm like, how many, how can these people be so unified in evil? And because they're unified in evil, there is a, 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 a chain there. There is a strength there. Now, we need to be praying. Part of our prayer and fasting is to break through that. But part of that is that unity in evil. Do you see what I'm saying? <coughs> unity can accomplish great things when believers are like-minded. Amen? Like-minded. A great example the Scripture gives is just like our bodies. Your body has to be of like-minded. Your body has to be in unity. When your body is functioning in unity, all your parts are clicking along properly. But can you imagine if your left foot says, you know what, I want to go that way. And your right foot says, I want to go that way. And your head is telling your body to go that way. You're going to be like, you're not going to get anywhere quick, right? Disunity always results in a fall. But like-minded believers get things done. Check this out. Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. A song of sense of David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, brothers, to dwell together in what? In unity. Now, this is a common verse, but I want to show it to you in a way maybe you hadn't seen before. It says, It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. Who was Aaron? Everybody say high priest. high priest. Moses, his brother, he was high priest. Amen. The beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. So I mean this anointing oil on the high priest, it's just flowing everywhere. Now watch. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Just what? Toby said, life forevermore. Now I want to show you a couple things about this. Where does the Lord command the blessing? He commands the blessing when brethren dwell together in unity. That's where he commands it. When we're of a like mind. Amen? Not just us within the sheetrock, but us with hundreds and hundreds of thousands and millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of believers around the planet are like-minded of what Holy Spirit is doing. Now, let me tell you, there's no power in hell that can stand against the body of Messiah. None whatsoever. Amen? We're brethren to dwell together in unity. That's where God commands the blessing. The word blessing is prosperity and plenty. You see, all the artisans, all of Israel, at that moment, at that moment, everybody say that moment. That moment, they were unified for the Lord's cause to build the tabernacle. And guess what? Because there was unity there for the Lord's cause, what did Holy Spirit do? He commanded the blessing. What was the blessing? Prosperity. He brought prosperity. They're in the middle of the desert. Hello, but they had emptied the coffers of Egypt. All the gold, all the silver, all the beautiful things of Egypt went with them. Do you understand that? So they had lots of stuff. But what are we going to do with this stuff? Well, let's use it for the kingdom. Amen? Listen, I'm not against people having stuff. What I say is whatever stuff you have, make sure you use it for his kingdom and his glory. Amen? Check this out. Verse 2, it is like the precious oil upon the head, running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments. What could this oil on his head and beard and garments possibly be? 
It had a sweet-smelling aroma. It was a special anointing oil. And it was an anointing oil that had only one purpose. Everybody say one purpose. One purpose. That purpose was to anoint the high priest. That was its only purpose. The special oil was to anoint the high priest. Now listen, Holy Spirit is not in Psalm 133 interested about oil on a high priest. He's using that as a metaphor, as a picture of something else. The oil is a metaphor and a picture of the Spirit of the Lord. <coughs> Biblical unity comes from Him and His Son and then down to us by His Spirit. You see, when you get the Word of God into your heart and it's transforming your life and you begin to obey it, now you're walking in unity with the Father and with the Son and now His Spirit is able to begin to use you in ways you never could have imagined and never thought possible, never dreamed. And it's not you, it's Him. You see, listen to me, guys. Holy Spirit wants to not just raise up another Billy Graham, another Smith Wigglesworth, another great man of faith, Apostle Paul. He wants to raise up the body of Messiah so that every one of His children, sons and daughters, are walking in the giftings and anointings that he's called them. Can you imagine how powerful that's going to be? And I believe that's coming before the Lord returns for us. I think that's one of the things that's going to usher in this end time awakening we're praying and praying and fasting and believing God for. So we're covered with oil from head to toe, and the holy land of Israel is covered from north to south with dew. And we're not talking about physical do. We're talking about, again, metaphor is spirit. Amen? Amen? Both oil and water are symbols of God's spirit and covers the whole body of Messiah. Every member, not just the head. Every member. Amen? Every member. The picture here is of the fullness or the completeness of the spirit at work in our life, God as we walk in unity with Him and with one another. As the high priest's body, we're the body of Messiah. Who is our high priest? Everybody say Yeshua. Yeshua. He's forever seated on the right hand of God the Father. He is our high priest. And we're the body of Messiah, which means we're the body of the high priest, right? So if we're the body of the high priest, whose body was anointed with oil? The body of the high priest. Do you see what I'm saying? So we're the body of the high priest, and the body of the high priest is anointed with oil from head to toe. And what oil are we anointed with? It's with his spirit. Find his purpose, find his plan, unite with it, and you'll find yourself covered from head to toe with his spirit, his prosperity to enable you to accomplish his task. It's really not hard, guys. It's, it's about this. It's about you stop struggling and say, you know what? I surrender. Your way, Lord, is way better. Amen? Way better. Do you ever find yourself struggling? It's just you, your pride. 1 Corinthians 1.10 Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yeshua Messiah, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Isn't that how Israel was to build the tabernacle? Aren't we building up a spiritual temple, raising up a holy tabernacle, not built with flesh but with the Spirit? Aren't we living stones in the new covenant, jointly fitted together? <coughs> Colossians 3.13, almost done. Be tolerant with one another. Forgive one another. Whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else, you must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. So perfect unity is bound together by a spirit of love. Amen? Where there is disunity, there's lack of love. Lack of love. You know, it's amazing, those 100,000 believers gathered there in Orlando, wish I'd been there, but they gathered there in Orlando, and they didn't know each other, but there was a spirit of unity there that 
went far beyond anything natural. It was because Holy Spirit had placed the same love in every one of them for the Father, for the Son, and for one another. Amen? And it's that unity that was brought about by his love. And Yeshua praised that in John 17, 23. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is his last prayer before his crucifixion. means it's a little bit important, amen? And he's praying to the Father. He says that I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected, matured in what? Unity. I'm telling you, this is a word from the Holy Spirit because this is what Holy Spirit's doing in these end times. While the world's going to chaos, he's bringing a new revelation of unity. And it's not a unity of just working together. It's being unified because his spirit's speaking the same thing to everybody. And what's that thing he's speaking? Fast and pray, fast and pray, fast and pray, fast and pray, and I'm going to use you to do mighty things on this earth. Amen? And it says, may be perfect in unity so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. How's the world going to know? When they see this love in us bringing the spirit of unity. In these last days, this is the word of the Lord. Amen? All right, guys. Are you?